In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to keep your WordPress website secure. Now, you should put an asterisk next to that because security is really something that we're always striving for but will never actually achieve. The problem is that security has human flaws involved. Now, trust me, I've gotten angry emails from people who've said, you got to get off of WordPress. WordPress is insecure and it'll never be secure. You need to move your websites to ClickFunnels or, or Wix or Squarespace or whatever the platform platform that they believe is perfect is. And the real truth is, I mean, look at the biggest banks in the world or the biggest movie studios in the world. They've all had security compromises. And typically it doesn't come down to software. It comes down to human error. So first things first, we got to get the human elements right here. And that's namely talking about user accounts and passwords. Just follow good hygiene. Use a separate user account for everybody on your website. Don't let employees share logins. You want to be able to track who's doing what. And the only way you you can do that is if people have their own user accounts. You'll also want to make sure people are not using the same passwords across multiple sites. Passwords should be generated uniquely for every website that you log into and they can be secured in a password manager so that you don't have to memorize a crazy long string of characters that you need to have to keep your website secure from brute force attacks. That's where hackers essentially try to guess your password until they eventually get locked out. The longer and more secure your password is, the harder it is for them to guess and the longer it will take. Eventually, if you have a secure password, it just takes so long, it wouldn't be worth the trouble. Of course, your host plays a huge component in how secure your website as well. If you're paying $2.99 for hosting, chances are your website is going to be about as secure as a $2.99 lock. Pay for premium hosting. When you pay for premium hosting, your host should be taking care of some security elements to make sure that brute force attacks or DDoS attacks attacks are not happening regularly to your website. So that's all stuff that can be done for you just by spending a little bit more money per month. And I'm not talking about hundreds of dollars. I'm saying use one of the platforms that I've recommended in the hosting video earlier on in this course. And let's say your website does get compromised, even though you have followed all of these good hygiene practices. Well, that is where a good backup plan is crucial. Now, typically your host is going to be taking daily or weekly backups of your site. They're is available inside of Cloudways, but you also want to have your own copies of your website stored somewhere else away from your host so that if someone gets into your hosting account, they can also delete your backups. So how does all this work? Let me show you how backups work. And then later on in this video, we'll look at some more security tools for WordPress. If you've been following along with this course and you've got a Cloudways hosting account, just log into your server and then click down here where it says backups. By default, Cloudways is taking a backup every single day. You can see that it happens here once per day and the last backup happened on 4.4. Cloudways is going to hang on to one week's worth of backups. So that'll be seven different instances. And if you want to have an extra copy of your site, you can turn on local backups, which will actually copy your site to your own server so that if something goes wrong, you can easily restore it to the local backup. If you're worried about updating something on your website, you can take a backup right from the Cloudways administration panel. So this is a really good first layer of your backup strategy. And hopefully you never need anything more than this, but you should still put some other measures in place. Updraft is the most popular free backup plugin for WordPress. Over in the WordPress repository, let's go ahead and search for Updraft. Here's the plugin. Let's go ahead and install it. You can see there's 2 million active installations and we'll hit activate. Now there is a paid version of Updraft you can upgrade to that adds some additional features. But really, if you're just getting going with your very first website and you want to have some way to back things up, Updraft can cover that for you. Upon installation, it gives me a little walkthrough. It says click here to start. And then it tells me to make my first backup. I can choose if I want to copy the database or the files of my website. I'm just going to leave both of these checked and I recommend you doing the same. Now I can create my first backup by just clicking this button, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not actually told Updraft where I want to back up to. So it's just going to create a local backup for me. And that's nice if something happens to my site locally that doesn't compromise the backup. But really what I want to worry about is what happens if my server becomes corrupted or taken over? Can I easily get my site going on another server if I have to? So I'm not actually going to set this up. I want to have some off-site backup. Let's close out of this tour and I'll close this window. Then we'll go over to the settings tab right here. And here are all of the different choices we have for the location for our off-site backup. Updrafts Plus has their own vault storage, but you're probably already familiar with something like Dropbox, Amazon S3, Google Drive, and you'll want to go with something you might already have an account on. I'm going to go ahead and back up with Dropbox because it's one of the easiest integrations to get going. I'll just scroll down to the bottom 
and hit save changes. Now, after I've done that, I have to actually authenticate with my Dropbox account. Here is the link to click. Now make sure you do this or you won't get the backup saved. I've signed in with Dropbox. I'll allow them access and let's hit complete setup. Now to go ahead and back up to Dropbox, I'll just hit back up now. Again, I'll leave the defaults selected and updraft is backing up to my Dropbox folder. All right, there we go. My backup was completed. That was really quick. Now back over in the settings tab here, I'd probably wanna set up a regular schedule for these backups to run. I can do a backup of the files or the database and set a schedule for as little as every two hours. And over here, I can choose how many backups I want to have retained. Now there is a reason not to run your backup too often and that would be because it's gonna create a bit of stress on your server. Every time the backup is running, it's really CPU intensive and that means that the server won't be able to display sites to your actual users quite as easily. When we get to the point that we're a little bit more serious about our WordPress website, our business is doing well, we'll probably want to invest in a tool that does something called incremental backups. And actually Updraft does this. If we go over to premium extensions right here, you can see the little pricing table that once we get to the paid version, we get incremental backups. I'll definitely link to that down below so you can check it out, see what the pricing looks like. That'll be our referral link. So if you buy, it'll kick us back a little bit of money. A few other nice features that come with the premium version of updraft is this pre-updates backup. What this means is anytime you go to update any components of WordPress, which we'll cover a little bit later in this video, updraft is gonna automatically back up your website to make sure that if anything goes wrong, you'll always have the most recent working version available to quickly restore. And the other feature I like is the ability to clone or migrate a site. So if you're moving files from one domain to the other, you get that included with the premium version of updraft. So for people just getting started with WordPress, I do recommend Updraft is a really good solution. Once you hit that point where you need incremental backups, their premium solution is really good as well. Personally, at my agency, we use another tool called WP Time Capsule. It works really well for agencies and businesses managing large numbers of websites. It's a little bit more expensive, so that's why I'm recommending Updraft Plus in this video. Next, let's talk about updates. One of the primary reasons that WordPress websites get hacked is not that WordPress is vulnerable, it's that people have added on software in the form of plugins, and that plugin has a vulnerability. Once hackers find out about it, they can scan for any websites using that plugin, and then they attack. It really makes your website a target if you don't keep it updated regularly. Now we've got a few different options here for how we can keep our website updated. Let's go ahead and check out the manual way to update our website by just clicking on the little arrows up here in the upper left-hand corner. Now here I can see I have some components that are out of date. First of all, WordPress core itself can be updated to version 5.4. Down below, I can see what plugins might be out of date, and then below that are any themes that might be out of date. These are all the kind of stock WordPress themes I didn't delete, and then Astra also has an update. Now, you might think, great, I'll just make it a part of my daily routine. I'll wake up, I'll update all of my WordPress stuff, and I'll never have to worry about that again. If only it were that easy. Now, the problem is sometimes WordPress updates include new features, but those features can also cause vulnerabilities. Other patches are just vulnerability fixes, and those are the ones that we really wanna get right away. The updates that just add new features, while those can be fun and, and cool and exciting to play with new toys, those are usually where you'll find the vulnerabilities because they haven't been stress tested enough and not enough people have beat away at them to find any security openings. So my general rule of thumb is to definitely update when a security vulnerability is there, do that as quickly as possible. But when it's a new feature, give it a few days or even a week or two to make sure that no one else discovers a vulnerability. You don't want to be the one that suffers the consequence of being an early adopter in this case. So how can we tell if a plugin is full of new features or it's a vulnerability fix? Well, thankfully there are usually some notes included with each plugin update. Right here it says view version 4.17.0 details. The version number is also a clue. Typically this first number is a major new release. So if it were to be version 5.0, I probably wouldn't want to adopt that right away. The next increment is usually gonna be a feature update. And then after that is gonna be a point release. So that's gonna be more of 
those security fixes. Because this is a point oh, I can almost be certain that this is going to be full of new features and not a security update. But definitely read the notes to be sure. Let's go ahead and open this up. And here I can see all of the changes that are included with this update. Now it looks like the main thing is a complete rewrite of part of the plugin. So that's definitely new features and I don't want to be the first to adopt brand new features. I would definitely recommend reading through all of these fixes to see if it's solving any ongoing problems you might be having with a plugin, but look for the words security and vulnerability. And if you see those, that's when you want to instantly click the update button. Now, when you just have one plugin that needs to be updated, this doesn't seem like that big of a task, but what happens when you get 30 plugins on your website and 12 of them have updates available? It gets to be a little bit more tedious to go through every single one and decide whether you want to update or wait a little bit longer to see if there's any security issues. Well, thankfully there are tools out there now that will actually look for vulnerable plugins on your website and automatically update them. One of the security plugins that I recommend is called WebARX and they have a brand new feature that does exactly this. So here is the Web ARX website. You can go ahead and check out their pricing here. This is not going to be a free plugin. You'll have to pay monthly for it. So this is $15 a month. And this is something I'd recommend after, again, your business is already profitable, your website is earning you money, and $15 a month doesn't seem like very much because you're already making hundreds or thousands of dollars per day from your website. So $15 a month is gonna give you really good security. Here's what it includes. This is a web application firewall or a WAF. Basically, that means it's a firewall that's going to prevent malicious actors from getting to your website. Then there's also another component, which is virtual patching and malware prevention. This is a plugin that lives inside of your WordPress site, and it's just going to monitor to see if anyone gets in and tries to change anything. If anything gets changed, they'll notify you that there's been a security breach. One of my favorite features of Web ARX is something they've just released, which is the ability to auto update vulnerable plugins. Now, what this means is they will keep an index of any plugins with known security vulnerabilities. As soon as a patch is available, it will automatically run an update on your website so that basically your website will never have any holes from unpatched plugins. This is really huge and it would cut down a massive amount of security breaches that have happened in the past. So Web ARX is great at preventing you from getting hacked, but what if you've already had a security issue? Someone's gotten into your website and injected some malicious code, it's not behaving as you expect, and you presume that your site has been hacked. What do you do? Well, there are several plugins out there that will scan your website for breaches and try to patch them if they can. Typically, if they can't, they offer some kind of uh, human intervention where you can actually hire them to come in and fix up your website. Let me show you one of my favorites. Let's head over to plugins add new, and let's search for WordFence. All right, here we go. WordFence security, firewall, and malware scan. That's what we want. You can see this has 3 million plus active installations. It's probably the most popular WordPress security plugin out there. If you don't want to spring for Web ARX, I think WordFence is a great uh, free solution. Now they do have obviously a paid plan as well. All right, so here they want me to enter my email address. And if I would like to join their mailing list, I can opt into that. I'm going to leave it off for now, and I will check that box to agree to their terms. Now, if I have premium, I can enter in my premium key here right now, but I'm just gonna hit no thanks. So now over here in the left-hand sidebar, we see word fence. And if I go down to the third option, it is scan. It kind of guides me through the process here. I'll press next, next. All right, so what we really wanna do is click right here where it says start new scan. It's gonna go through the scan and tell me if I've had any compromises. You can see the first three options are premium only. That is uh, spam advertising checks, a uh, spam check, and a blacklist check. So if those are important to you, you can unlock them by buying their premium plan. So it's completed the scan here. You can see that it did the server state, file changes, a malware scan, a content safety scan, public file scan, password strength scan, a vulnerability scan, and a user and option audit. Now I do have two issues that showed up here, both under file changes and vulnerability scan. So let's see what this is all about. So the first thing it found is that the WordPress core file has been modified, the upgrade page particularly, and this is a high priority issue. So if I wanna get some more details on this, I can click the 
see a uh, little magnifying glass here. And it says that the core file has been modified and it differs from the original, original file distributed with this version of WordPress. Now, that could be a very bad thing. Someone could have gotten into the core files of my WordPress website and made it look like there's an update for some software when there's really not. They're just trying to take over control of my platform. So let's go ahead and view the differences of the files here. Here I can see the original version of the file to the modified version of the file. Now, if this stuff doesn't make sense to you, this is definitely where you'd want to call in an expert and say, hey, is this anything to worry about? I'll tell you right here, it's not anything to worry about. Basically, this is a comment. So this line of the code has been commented out. And I suspect this happened when I installed the WP SMTP mail plugin so that it kind of overrode the basic WordPress settings. So this one, I'm not too terribly concerned about. My options here are either to repair and bring it back to the original state, or I can just ignore it. And you know what? That's what I'm going to do here. Now, the next high priority issue is that my WordPress core is actually out of date. So that's easy enough. I can just head over to the update section and go ahead and apply the update. So I'm going to ignore that for now. The other vulnerabilities it found is that my other plugins are out of date. So these aren't real issues. They're nothing to be worried about, but you can see if there was an actual issue, it did kind of catch something that was a little bit alarming and we can dig in a little bit deeper and decide whether we need to panic or not. If you do get overwhelmed, you can always click one of these buttons at the bottom. If you want to have them clean your hacked site, you can click right over here and that'll show you their cleaning services, which are $179 currently. So it turns out that having a secure WordPress website is very similar to just having a good secure home computer. You don't want to do the same things in both places. Use good passwords that you don't reuse on multiple websites. Have backups and multiple backups that you keep in different locations so not all of your eggs are in one basket. And update your system. When there are security patches, make sure they are applied in a time efficient manner. If you follow those three things, you're really not going to run into too many problems. But when you do, of course, there are security services out there that can bail you out out when you need. I do recommend Web ARX and WordFence as we covered in this video. So that's going to do it for this video on security and backups. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments down below. We'll also link to the Facebook group in the description so you can head over there and join the WordPress conversation. It's going to do it for this video and I'll see you in the next lesson.